Hi, this is Champlet 2 with the premiere episode of Champlet 2's FAQs. On YouTube and on my Discord channel, I get so many questions from viewers and friends, and I do my best to answer all of them as quickly as I can. One of those common threads I get most often is about trading in properties. Someone will ask, if I trade my nightclub for another location, will I lose all of my technicians and storage levels in the nightclub warehouse? Another frequently asked question, will I lose my research items if I move to a new bunker? There's many more similar questions like that about changing a property's location. This video will feature, hopefully, everything you ever wanted to know about trading in every type of property currently in GTA. I really wanted to be sure the information I was providing was accurate, so in order to do that, I purchased at least one of every kind of property in GTA, then purchased every possible upgrade one at a time, and then purchased them all again at another location to document what you keep and what you lose when you relocate and which upgrades increase your trade-in value and which don't. I'd say the most important tip that I can give you about all the properties in GTA is that once you buy it, you own it. You can trade it for another location, but you cannot sell it back or in any other way get rid of it. So, for example, once you own a bunker, you will always own a bunker. It's just a matter of where. Once you buy an apartment, you will always have either that apartment or another location or a stilt house or garage in its place but you can't get rid of it now i have to make one little disclaimer purchasing properties when they're on sale either when you first purchased it or if it's on sale when you're moving to a new location that might have an impact on these calculations these trade-in values are intended to be a best estimate but other factors could affect them. I realize this is a long video, and of course I hope you'll stick around to watch the whole thing because there's lots of good information in here. But if you need to skip ahead, there's shortcuts in the video description below so you can jump right to the information about the property that you're considering trading for a new location. We'll get started with CEO related businesses and properties, beginning with the executive office. The executive office property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. If you got it for free in a criminal enterprise pack, well, 50% of free is zero, so you won't get any trade-in for those. Office garages that you've already purchased, as well as all design and lighting options in those garages, and all the personal vehicles in the garages as well will transfer to the new location. What were you looking for? So will the custom shop, if you've already purchased that. Now what do you need? You keep the male or female assistant that you already had, as well as your office's business name. The living quarters, gun locker, and money safe each have a 50% trade-in value if you already owned them. And if you want them in your new office location, they will need to be purchased again for the current price. The decor in the new office location will be the default style option, and you will not receive any trade-in value for any style options you had purchased previously. If you choose to upgrade this style, you will have to pay the current price for it again. Any awards that you have on your CEO desk that you may have received for sales achievements will also appear in your new office. If you've made any special cargo sales in your career, all the cash and merchandise scattered around your executive office will appear in your new office location exactly as it was before. Now, if you're anything like me, I can't stand all that clutter in my office, so I was really disappointed to find out if you move, you don't get rid of all that stuff. But from what I hear, most people really like that, so maybe you'll be happy to learn you won't lose that if you move to a new office location. Let's move on now to relocating your arcade. The arcade property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. 
if you purchase the garage, it will transfer to the new location along with all of the personal vehicles that were in it. If you also already own the master control terminal, it will appear in the new location too. If you own the drone stations, you also keep them when you move. All casino heist progress, all items, vehicles, and personnel like Avi Schwartzman that you've acquired for the heist, and all special items you've purchased for the heist like the casino model or the vault wall, they'll all transfer to the new arcade location. Now, unlike most of the other business-related properties, you will not receive any trade-in value for the arcade living quarters if you own them, and you will have to pay the current price to add them back to your new arcade location. Any arcade games that you already own will move to the new location automatically in the same arrangement in the arcade, and any high scores you've made on those arcade games will not be reset. A little piece of really good news is you do not have to repeat the setup mission that you completed when you first bought your arcade. If you bought the high scores screens, they will also transfer to the new location. Any style options, murals, flooring, and neon art don't receive any trade-in value and they will need to be purchased again at the current price in the new arcade. Any trophies or awards like the plushies from the Kitty Claw game will all appear in your new arcade location along with any cash that was in your office safe when you traded in your former arcade. Here's what you need to know about relocating your nightclub. You must sell all product from your nightclub warehouse prior to trading it in for a new location. Your nightclub earnings history and any trade price unlocks that you've earned from completing popularity missions will remain intact after relocating. The nightclub property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. All garages and all storage levels that you previously owned will automatically transfer to the new nightclub location. That means you cannot downsize your garages or your storage levels when you relocate. All personal vehicles and the Terabyte and the Oppressor Mark II and your warehouse delivery vehicles, all that you had in your previous nightclub, will appear in your new location with all of the upgrades you'd purchased for them. Any trade price unlocks such as the one for the Oppressor Mark II that you earned from completing terabyte client missions will also remain available to you. All of the technicians you previously had will remain with you in the new nightclub warehouse. Now when I was doing my testing, I actually unassigned all my technicians from the products they were manufacturing because I wanted to make sure they didn't make anything and that I'd have to turn around and sell one or two crates just so I could trade this property. But I do believe, I didn't confirm this, but I do believe that the technicians will remain assigned to the same products they were assigned to when you relocate to your new nightclub. However, it would be a good idea to go back and double check that just to make sure they're still properly assigned after your relocation. Now, since your other businesses were not impacted at all by relocating your nightclub, all of the products that you had available for manufacturing will still be available in the new nightclub location. All of the DJs you've unlocked, your current popularity level, the sales awards on your office desk, any cash in your nightclub safe, and also your selected club name will all transfer to the new location. All design options, including the nightclub style, the light rig, the dancers, and the dry ice, all have zero trade-in value and will not transfer to the new nightclub location. You'll need to purchase each of these again at the current price. Any equipment, security, and staff upgrades that you previously purchased will be lost and there is no trade-in value for these upgrades. You'll have to purchase those again at the new location for the current price. 
If you don't purchase the equipment upgrades, your product manufacturing will be extremely slow and you won't have the TV screens that are in your office and all around the bar areas. Without the security upgrades, you'll be more likely to get raided and you'll also no longer find weapons and ammunition around the desks in the basement levels of your nightclub. And if you choose not to purchase the staff upgrades, it won't impact your manufacturing but it will cause you to possibly lose popularity a little bit faster and you won't have extra bartenders. And the really good news is you do not have to repeat all of those setup missions that you completed when you first bought your nightclub property. Now we'll take a look at relocating the facility. The facility property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. All personal vehicles, including the Avenger and the Thruster, and any upgrades that you've made to them, they'll all transfer to the new facility. If you purchased the Orbital Cannon, it has a 50% trade-in value, but you would need to purchase it again for the current price in the new location. If you owned the Security Room, it also has a 50% trade-in value, and you would need to purchase it again for the current price in the new location. If you choose not to purchase that security room again, the gun locker it contains and the weapons that are laying around the security rooms will no longer be available to you in the new facility. If you owned the living quarters, you'll receive a 50% trade-in value and as well as whatever you paid for the style option for the living quarters. You'll get 50% trade-in for that as well, but of course you'll have to buy the living quarters again in your new facility. If you purchase the privacy glass for the lounge in your prior facility, you'll receive a 50% trade-in value for that. However, there is no trade-in value for the lounge style, and the lounge privacy glass and the style will need to be bought again for the current price. Style and graphics options that you purchased previously do not transfer and they have no trade-in value. So you'll need to pay the current price for your preferred style and graphics. Your current progress on the doomsday heists will transfer to the new facility location along with any of the items in your facility that you earned from your doomsday heist progress. The hangar is the one property out of all the property types in GTA that gave me the greatest difficulty with this trade-in analysis. In fact, I kid you not, I bought at least eight hangar properties trying to get these numbers to make sense. But one little part of this just doesn't make any sense at all. I'll cover everything I know for sure and then I'll tell you the little part that didn't quite make sense last. You must sell all of the product from your hangar prior to trading it in for the new location. Your earnings history and any trade price unlocks that you've earned from completing hangar supply missions are still available to you after relocating. Now I haven't earned any awards for the hangar sales because I've done so little of them, but based on the fact that all of the other businesses keep your awards on their desks when you move, I would assume that will happen here in the hangar too. The hangar property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. All of the aircraft that you own, including any upgrades you've made to them, will transfer to the new hangar automatically. All right, both. If you previously well, you purchased the workshop the in the hangar, you'll receive a 50% trade-in value for that, and you'll need to purchase it again for the current price in your new hangar location. All style lighting and flooring options as well as the office furniture styles have zero trade-in value and you'll need to buy them again at the current price in your new hangar. Here's the one little detail that just doesn't add up. For every other property type, for every upgrade that has any trade-in value, it has always been 50%. But not this one. If you already own the living quarters, you'll get approximately a 20% trade-in value for that. If you had the traditional style, it's nearly exactly 20%. If you had the modern style, it appears to be closer to 19% trade-in value for that. 
I honestly can't explain why this one's so different, but even after buying and trading like eight or nine different hangers, this was how the numbers kept coming out. If anybody else has a better explanation for this, I would be really happy to hear about it. So please post a comment. Now we'll take a look at relocating your vehicle warehouse. All imported vehicles must be exported before you can trade your vehicle warehouse for a different location. If you've imported a whole lot of cars and saved 10 standards and 10 mid-ranges so you can only import top range cars, this is a very big deal. Not only do you have to export all of those cars, which can take a while because there's a long cool down time between exports, but you'll also have to import and store all 10 of those standard and 10 mid-range cars again when you get to your new location. The vehicle warehouse property has a 50% trade-in value. Any style upgrades that you made to your previous warehouse, they don't have any trade-in value and you will need to purchase them again for the new location. Any special vehicles that you may have purchased and stored in the lower level of your previous vehicle warehouse will be transferred automatically to the new location. Next, we'll take a look at relocating a special cargo warehouse. All product must be sold prior to trading a cargo warehouse for a new location. The special cargo warehouse property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. You may only trade a cargo warehouse for the same size or larger, so you cannot downsize. You can own up to five special cargo warehouses at one time. Any upgrades that you may have purchased for the delivery vehicles in your previous location will remain for all of your cargo warehouse locations. I saved the bunker for the last of the CEO businesses because it's also a motorcycle club business. All product must be sold prior to trading a bunker for a new location. All unused supplies and partially completed research will be lost. So it's highly recommended to use up your supplies for the product that you can sell and wait to complete any active research or fast track it to get it done prior to the move. The Bunger property has a 50% trade in value from your original purchase price. As I mentioned with the executive office, if you received your bunker as part of a criminal enterprise package, you will not receive any trade-in value for that free bunker, but you should receive trade-in value for the applicable upgrades that you purchased for it. If you purchased an upgraded bunker style, the living quarters, a gun locker, transportation, meaning the little golf carts, or the shooting range, all of these items will receive a 50% trade-in value for what you originally paid for them. You will need to purchase them again at the current price for the new bunker location. Regarding the shooting range, any rewards that you earned from completing challenges in the shooting range will remain yours to keep. If you unlocked the weapons and ammo that were on the floor near the entrance to the shooting range, they will reappear if you purchase another shooting range in your new bunker location, but they're not available without buying another shooting range. You keep all of your completed or unlocked research items when you move to a new location, as well as the MOC, along with all of its upgrades, and any other vehicles that you own that were stored in the previous bunker, such as the anti-aircraft trailer you see here, they'll all transfer to your new location. All progress that you've made on MOC missions and any trade price unlocks also remain current as well. All of your bunker earnings history will also remain intact when you get to the new location. Any equipment, security, or staff upgrades that you purchased in your previous bunker have a zero trade-in value, and they will need to be purchased again at the current price in your new location. If you choose not to buy the equipment and staff upgrades, manufacturing and research will be performed at a slower rate. The security upgrade helps to prevent your bunker business from being raided. 
you will need to complete the initial setup mission for the bunker again in your new location before you can start up your gun running business and before you can manufacture sporting goods again in your nightclub. Now we'll get into the motorcycle club businesses and properties. Let's take a look first at trading a motorcycle clubhouse. The motorcycle clubhouse has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. This is not affected by whether it was a one or a two-story clubhouse. The trade-in value is still 50%. If you previously owned the gun locker or the custom bike shop, you'll receive a 50% trade-in value for each of those and you will need to purchase them again in your new location. Any design upgrades that you owned, such as the mural, the clubhouse wall style, wall hangings, and furniture options, all have zero trade-in value, and they will need to be purchased again for the current price in the new location. If you purchased a club emblem, that has a zero trade-in value, but if you owned the custom crew logo emblem, It'll automatically select that option for you again during the purchase of the new location and it'll charge you the current price by default unless you change that selection. So just be on the lookout for that when you're trading for a new motorcycle clubhouse. You do not have to pay for your motorcycle club's name again unless you want to change it. All personal motorcycles currently stored in the club's garage will automatically transfer to the new location. All progress on clubhouse contracts remain current in your new location. Now for the motorcycle club businesses, this information applies to all five of them with no exceptions. If you have any unsold product or unused supplies when you relocate your business, it will all be lost. It's recommended to use up all the supplies for product and sell it before you start your trade-in. Each business property has a 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. Now I found this kind of weird because it was a little bit different than all the other businesses, but the equipment and the security upgrades that you purchased at your previous location do have a 50% trade-in value but there's no trade-in value for the staff upgrade. Of course, you'll need to purchase all of those again at your new business location. Now, the bad news is you will need to complete the initial setup mission for the business again in your new location before you can start up your MC business and before you can manufacture the corresponding product again in your nightclub. The good news is, it's just a simple go pick up some product and bring it right back, so it's not that big of a deal. That does it for all of the business properties, so now we'll take a look at the personal properties. All apartments, stilt houses, and garages are what I refer to as personal properties, and they're all essentially interchangeable when you want to relocate. You can trade an apartment for a garage, or trade a garage for a stilt house, or trade a stilt house for an apartment, and so on. All personal properties have 50% trade-in value from your original purchase price. As long as you still own at least one high-end apartment, your heist progress as a host on these five heists will remain intact because you can host these heists from any high-end apartment that you own. However, I was unable to prove what happens if you trade in your last high-end apartment, other than the fact that you'll no longer be able to host these heists without one. I don't know for sure if your hosting progress will return if you eventually purchase another high-end apartment at a later date, but I suspect it will. Currently, only the penthouse apartments in Eclipse Towers have a style option. You get to choose any style option for free when you purchase one of these penthouses. If you spent money at a later date for a style change, there's no trade-in value for any of those style upgrades that you bought. If the property you're trading has more personal vehicles in it, then there are garage spaces in the property where you're relocating to, 
Your vehicles are not lost or destroyed. Some of them are placed into storage and can be retrieved by calling the mechanic. Here in this video, I'm trading a 10 car garage that has eight vehicles in it for a six car garage. Now here you can see when I got to the six car garage, I found only four of my eight vehicles were transferred to this new location. The missing vehicles weren't listed here in the vehicle management menu but they were not destroyed and waiting for me to call Moore's Mutual to get them back either. I called the mechanic and they were listed under the new property address, but they have the word storage beside them in parentheses. I just requested to have one of those on vehicles way. from storage delivered to me. And I could either put at least two of them in that six car location because I had two vacancies or I could move them to any other personal property or business garage space that I already own. There are currently three properties that you can purchase that only have one location, so you can't trade them in for another one. We'll do a quick review of each of these three. The Galaxy Yacht cannot be traded for a different model. For example, you can't downgrade a Pisces and buy a less expensive Orion model and make a trade-in profit. To change models as well as any other design changes on the yacht, they're considered to be an upgrade. You'll have to pay the current price for all modifications on the yacht. So if you have, say, a Pisces and you want to change it to an Orion that is not considered a trade-in, you actually have to pay for that modification. The casino pet house cannot be downsized. Whatever rooms and options you've already purchased for that, you cannot downsize to something smaller. You can upgrade it and add more spaces and rooms and features, and you can change your design options. You just can't go to a smaller casino pet house layout. With the Arena Wars, you can purchase and upgrade your design options and add additional mechanics and garage spaces and vehicles for the current cost. But once you've purchased additional garage space or the personal quarters, and once you've paid for additional mechanics, you can't downsize and go back to less than what you currently have. You can only change colors and options and styles at that point. Now, if you've purchased special vehicles for Arena Wars, you can trade those back in. You can sell them back in the same way you do any vehicles in the game at Los Santos Customs. Well, thank you very much for watching. A like for this video and a subscription to my channel are always greatly appreciated. Check out the link in this video's description to my Discord channel. Join me there for sneak previews of my videos and great GTA discussions with lots of other great players on every platform. I sure hope to see you there. My friends on Discord chipped in with some great suggestions and tips for this video. I really appreciate your help, guys. Thanks for having my back. Happy moving day.